Hey y'all, what's good? It's your boy here, Chris Troyer, and welcome back to another game review. I haven't done one of these in a while, but after playing this game, I just knew I absolutely had to review it and tell you guys about it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not gonna lie, I've even been kind of putting it off because I have so many clips of it, and I knew it was gonna take up so much space on my phone, be tedious to edit together and stuff like that, and, you know, put the audio in. And also, I was kind of afraid of, like, accidentally messing it up, so I just want to use the absolute best verbiage possible to tell you guys how much of an absolutely awesome game this is. So, Without further ado, let's just jump into it. Today we're going to be reviewing a game that goes by the name of The Legend of Tian Ding. Which, by the way, I'm really hoping that I didn't mess that name up too bad. I mean, like, in the game they pronounce it a certain way. Yao Tian Ding, you know what I mean? Like, they were pronouncing it a certain way. I mean, I probably didn't do it that accurately, but I tried my best just not to butcher that name, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, it's basically a 2D side-scroller platforming beat-em-up action-adventure game that's, like, more, like, narrative-driven that takes place back in uh, olden days China. China, where basically there's this whole Japanese government thing that's taking them over and there's a bunch of people that are homeless and poverty stricken on the street and stuff like that and basically you know there's a bunch of chaotic stuff going on and people are trying to rebel against the Japanese government and stuff because they're uh, tyrannizing or if that's even a word you know uh, Chinese citizens and people and stuff like that um, the game did say that it's based on like complete fiction any like real life references that might exist that coincide with the game's characters or story is absolutely coincidental you know what i'm saying but if i didn't know any better i mean me personally i'm i don't know much about chinese japanese history but it just seems so accurate and it seems so legitimate you know what i'm saying like the collectibles the things that you can collect it just seems like it's so accurate compared to uh actual chinese japanese history but you know it's probably not anyway you play through the game as the main protagonist uh liao tian Dean. once again trying my best not to mess that name up who's basically Chinese Robin Hood, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he wears the hat, he has the red sash and everything. He really gives off major Robin Hood vibes. In fact, if I didn't know any better, I'd, I'd say that he's just about pretty much directly based on Robin Hood, you know what I'm saying? Because you play through the game helping out people that are on the street, giving them money, uh, fighting off bad guys that are terrorizing citizens and stuff, like, you know, street thugs and stuff like that, you know what I mean? You fight against police officers that are trying to put you in jail, you know what I'm saying? He's pretty much Robin Hood, but just the Chinese version. And he's armed with, like, a dagger and stuff, but, like, as you play through the game, you can actually snatch weapons from enemies with his red sash, which is actually a pretty fun part of the game, you know what I'm saying? Because you can throw them up into the air, it leads into combos, and stuff but i'm going to talk about the gameplay in a little bit but for now i just want to focus on the overall narrative setup of the game so throughout the game you meet a bunch of old and new friends allies and comrades including uh tian din sensei wu lu tian i think i pronounced that once again probably messed that up too but i'm gonna keep going with it and his old childhood friend uh, Gwai, I think it's uh, a, a guy like it's a dash G U A I. I'm not completely sure how to pronounce it, obviously, but um, yeah, basically Tian Dean's girlfriend, aka childhood friend. Honestly, they should just like kiss, but um, anyway, yeah, so you meet a bunch of friends, you meet a bunch of people that are trying to help you on your quest to take down all of the Japanese villains and bad guys, and overall just protect Taipei City, which is by the way the location that most of the game's narrative takes place in. Overall, the story is definitely not bad, you know. I mean, very simplistic and easy to follow and very well illustrated through the game's uh, comic book style drawings. They look very well drawn. The little mini animations and animatics are very well designed and all that. Awesomely drawn visuals, awesomely drawn character design. Overall, very well put together and composed by the artists and animators and character designers overall. Now, let's finally talk about the gameplay. The gameplay, as you can probably tell from these clips that I put together, is nothing short of awesome impeccable beautifully coded and beautifully designed it's amazing you know what i mean the little jump kicks fly kicks the shadow jutsu techniques the traversing the fact that you can grab enemies weapons with your red sash the fast pace the dodging it's honestly just really fun you know what i mean and uh in terms of difficulty there's only two difficulties to the game there's the regular easy casual difficulty and then there's wanted outlaw honestly there's not really much difference between the two difficulties i mean i 
obviously just chose Wanted Outlaw right off the bat because I wanted a little bit of a challenge. But from what I can gather, the difficulty doesn't really change that much in terms of like fighting through regular levels on both difficulties. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it can come off as a little bit tedious and the amount of enemies might overwhelm you, but I'm pretty sure you'll be fine if you have enough of the little health items, the buns that you have equipped, and if you have enough charms equipped too, or talismans in this case. But the boss battles, the boss battles, they are difficult. You know what I'm saying? Like you'll die a lot of times at the beginning if you don't have like really good reaction time and muscle memory and memorization skills. You know what I'm saying? They're going to kill you a lot. You're going to lose a lot of coins. It's obviously going to be pretty frustrating. You know what I'm saying? But overall, I guess that's sort of kind of like a good motivator, a good pusher to encourage you to get better and more skilled at the game, which is pretty good. You know what I'm saying? It's nice to have a little, a good amount of difficulty to a nice challenge, nice spice. You feel me? Overall, the game gets a nine out of 10 from me. You know what I mean? Very well put together, well designed, good art style, uh, fun mechanics and fun gameplay, challenging gameplay too. You know what I mean? Challenging boss battles, really fun traversing too. Like the spider wire, you can even get a triple jump too. At first you can get a double jump, but you can get this talisman later in the game that allows you to have a triple jump. You know what I mean? You can uh, glide through the air as you can see right here. You know what I mean? With this little parachute. I'm not really sure what it's called. A Takasago robe, I think. The only reason that it's not getting a 10 out of 10 is because honestly, sometimes the story and the dialogue can get a little bit boring and dragged out. You know what I'm saying? It can get a little bit over perpetuated, over extended, over serialized. You know what I'm saying? And times when you just want to get into the combat, get into the action and progress through the game, you have to sit through a whole like uh, 10 minutes of dialogue and story and lore and stuff that you're not really that interested in reading. But if you have the patience uh, to sit through it, then it's honestly not that much of a problem. Or you can just skip through all the dialogue by mashing the A button or depending on what console you're playing it on or what platform you're playing it on, just mashing the skip dialogue button. You know what I'm saying? Either way, it's a bit of a problem, but not that big of a problem. Also, I probably said this before, but I should re-mention that the game honestly isn't that long. You know what I'm saying? Like there's only about like one, two, three, four, five major boss battles. But in between those, there's some like pretty long levels. So the game should take you like a good amount of time to beat, but not too long. Like depending on the pace you play it at, it could take you either like a couple days or if you try to play through it in one day, um, then probably like 10 hours or so plus the side quest that might take you an extra like two to three hours maybe you know give or take it's not that big of a game it's only like like literally not even in the double digits of gigabytes so i'm pretty sure i'll have to recheck but either way i honestly kind of wish it could have been longer you know what i'm saying anyway i think that's going to wrap up today's game review thank you guys so much for tuning in and tapping on the video be sure to leave a like subscribe for more game reviews maybe suggest some games that i should possibly review down in the comments below and until then i'm gonna see y'all in the next video and peace out.